One of the tasks that many people schedule for the beginning of the year is often a full body checkup. And there are often questions, common questions that come up with many patients. Our CBC Health columnist, Dr. Melissa Lem, has noticed some patterns with what people are asking. And she joins us live now to talk about these repeated concerns. Dr. Lem, thanks for being here. Um, so we asked you to put together a list of the most uh, common health questions you get at your practice as a family physician. Um, so the first one, we'll go right through them. You can take us through uh, what you tell your patients. Should someone be concerned if they don't get their period at the same time each month? This is a really common question, especially in younger women who are just starting to have their periods. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is quite a large range of normal in terms of menstrual cycle length. So it's defined as day one of one period to day one of the next. And that can vary anywhere from 21 days to 35 days. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice that your periods are starting, they start out regular and they start to get more regular, or you're consistently falling outside that three to five week boundary, then you should probably see your doctor because there are conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, hormonal issues and pregnancy, for example, that can delay or make your periods irregular. Quite a wide range. Sounds to be quite normal, though, in many cases. Uh, this next one, I have a two-year-old, so I can relate. Uh, a lot of patients asking, my toddler put an object up his nose. How do I get it out? This is something that really frequently happens in actually children under four years old. So your toddler is in exactly that right age range because they don't know how to blow their noses yet. And also they still tend to stick things up their noses that they shouldn't. And there is a technique that every parent of young children should know called mother's kiss, where first of all, you tell the child, okay, I'm going to give you a big kiss. What you do is you actually seal your mouth around the child's mouth, and then you block the nostril that doesn't have the object in it with your finger. And then you give a little bit of air. And once you feel resistance, that's their vocal cords closing, and then give a puff of air. And 60% of the time, that foreign body will come out of the, the nostril that it's in. And that might just mean that you can avoid a visit to the doctor. That is a great tip. I hadn't heard of that. I'm taking notes. Uh, the next question, do I need antibiotics for my sore throat? We know it's that time of year, so what's your advice? 80% of the time, the answer is you probably don't because most sore throats are caused by viruses which do not respond to antibiotics. And some clues that you might have a virus are the fact that other parts of your body might be affected, not just your throat. So if you have a runny nose and a cough, chances are you don't need antibiotics. Clues that you may need antibiotics for something like strep throat are if you look back in your throat and you see a lot of pus, like yellow and, and uh, white stuff back there. If you have tender lymph nodes on your neck and also if you have a fever, but that said, some viruses can cause the same symptoms. So a lot of doctors these days are doing a throat swab first and then waiting for the results to come back before they prescribe antibiotics to cut down on the risk of resistance because not every bug needs a drug. Good to know all those symptoms because, yeah, it does sound like there is quite a, a difference there. Uh, next question, my blood pressure is high, but I feel completely fine. Do I really need to take medication? There's a reason why hypertension or high blood pressure is called the silent killer. Mm -hmm. It's because many people have no idea that they have it because they have no symptoms, but it's damaging your body in the background, increasing your risk of heart disease and stroke and serious conditions like kidney failure. And so the bottom line is that every adult, 18 and over, um, for the rest of their lives should at least once a year get their blood pressure checked to be able to detect and get on top of these issues early. Because if you can't manage your blood pressure with lifestyle, um, um, or diet or uh, exercise or quitting smoking, that sort of stuff, then sometimes medication may be necessary to treat your high blood pressure. All right, Dr. Lem, thank you. Some fascinating questions. We know a lot of people have been asking, so we appreciate you taking the time to answer them. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you.